I've had 18 windows open at one time. Me, that was magic. It was very, very quick. I like that, that's good. <laughs> And we can switch back and forth between those programs to watch what the car is doing live on the track. They might want broccoli, they might want T-bones, they might want french fries. There is very little that you have to know to make it work. It was very user-friendly, it was very accessible. I have no idea how this works. I can't to see me. Hello, okay. live stream. I'm Setting ready. up for Coda Radio. It's ready. You're watching it's the right. Windows 95 release celebration video secret video that I found on the internet. Just watching a few moments of it as we get set up for Coda Radio. Come on in. The chat room's nice. Not too busy in there. We could use your help. Get in that chat room. Coder.show slash matrix. We'll watch a little more of this video just because it's so precious. It's going to get me in trouble with YouTube probably. I hope not. We're watching this for historic reasons. Hashtag no copyright intended. But let's give it a little more. Uh, let's give it a little more view here because it's pretty great so far. Yeah. There's uh, there's the Redmond campus as it used to be. Boy, this is such a crappy shot. There's the release. They have this big ass Ladies release party. Gentlemen, welcome to the launch of Windows 95. Yeah. You know. I can't believe what an incredible product this is. You know, before, before I met Bill Gates, I knew almost nothing about computers. He was kind enough to lend me one, this beautiful 1975 Altar 8800. <laughs> this thing has a worse memory than Rosa Lopez. The nice thing about Doesn't it, though, land. you can put 20 Doesn't phone land. numbers in it, and within 45 minutes, call any one of them back just like that. Pretty hey, amazing study, stuff. Jay. Oh, he's so funny. He's so funny. All right. I don't want to get in too much trouble, so I'll put a link to this in the Matrix chat room if you'd like to go grab it and watch the rest. It's actually an hour and 32 minutes long. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we can only really play the, the little bits of it, but, you know, if you want your Jay Leno cringe, that's where you can get it. All right, let's shift gears. Mr. Dominic will be here in just a moment. If we have time, I want to play this clip of a TV journalist who, quote, had a wild ride inside a Waymo self-driving car. So that's coming up next. Of course, Coder Radio 541. So please do join us over coder.show slash matrix. You can help title this thing. I'll get that bot going. And you can give us our live feedback and give us that live energy we're always looking for. All right. So stand by.
maybe I'll go to another stop. Okay, here we go. Says your car is on the way in four minutes. Oh, there it is. I see it. I guess I shouldn't wave because what's the point, right? What's the point? Oh, but it stopped. I'm here. Oh, I think it's confused. Better run before it goes away. It wasn't supposed to stop here. OK. We're going to pick my son up at the Random Museum. I thought it was going to feel like unsafe because, you know, my life is in this car's hand, the computer. But actually, I feel like really chillax. So what I do like is that it's following the speed limit, so it's very safe. Um, and when it comes to a stop, it does a complete stop, not like a California stop, like we all do. No, like everything, it's something new. Okay, I think we're stopped. Oh my God. Yes, okay. All right, right now there's a green light and nothing is happening. We are stuck. And not only that, we're not even on the left-hand side properly. Uh-oh. Okay, it says our team is working to get you moving. Uh-oh. It was green light, it didn't know what to do. So how can I rely on a car to make the right decisions when it can't read a simple green light? Now we're going, here we go. Woo! There's my son. Hey Max, we're almost there. Oh, this is weird, this is not where we're going. This is not where the Randall Museum is. For your safety, the doors will remain locked when we arrive. So I guess it's a little confused because this is not where the Randall Museum is. So I don't know what to do at the moment. If had there been a driver right here, I would have said, hey, you know, you this is the wrong location. And I would give him the instructors, except that there's instructions. There's nobody here right now. Now I'm going to have to call support and see what I could do because I'm completely at a loss right now. Um, the location where I want to be is over there and it's dropped me at the bottom of this hill. Connected to rider support. Go ahead and open your Waymo app. Okay, so go ahead and tap on your current drop off. Okay, which is Randall Museum, but it says five minute walk after drop off. I would have to go up the hill and around the block. Go to the map to find 10 location. So you'll go ahead. Let me see, hold on. All right, I'm just gonna confirm it and see what happens. I don't know what to do at this point. I hope it takes me there. So hopefully it'll make a left, but it's not. It's gonna make a right. Ooh, I don't know where it's taking me right now. I wish I could talk to the driver. Uh, then tell him, make a right, make a left. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's oh, it's it gonna to make a right it's again. A Oh, wait, wait, it might, oh, it's dropping me in the same place where it dropped me off before. Okay, uh, we're back to square one. Hello, Max. Vehicle approaching. Sorry, sorry, it didn't work out. And I felt like trapped inside here. I just felt like so useless in this. You don't hire a driverless car. It drops you off and then tells you your location is five minutes away walking. That's that's not even cool. My son could have ran or, you know, walked down the hill. That would have been okay. But what if it had been a disabled person, somebody on crutches and a wheelchair? Um, they can't do that. I came into this like with a lot of optimism and now I'm not sure. I would say have fun with it, but be prepared to be frustrated. So I'm gonna go now and drive down to the Randall Museum and see how easy it is to get there. Here we go. The driverless car, instead of going straight to the Randall Museum, it decided to make a ride <laughs> here. Made no sense whatsoever. And you could just see oh for goodness. yourself. This is an ordinary street. And the Randall Museum is at the end of the street. We have arrived we never got here which was the most frustrating thing you know i mean I, that is kind of frustrating about the hill thing but i don't think i don't think she's appreciating the scope of the problem 
<laughs> uh, I don't know what I was expecting, though. That's pretty funny. Oh, she did it again. She did it again. So this is like deja vu all over again. Uh, we tried oh my God. to get dropped off at uh, the Randall Museum with Waymo. Didn't work. They don't even go there. Now we're going to try cruise. Guess what? They don't go there either. It's outside of their map area. So here's the goods, my son. Uh, he is ready to uh, try another. I love that they mic'd him basically just for that, right? He's got a little lapel mic and all. it's just a high there. <laughs> like they needed him mic'd for that. One cruise to see how it's going. Says it looks good. Let's go. Okay, meet at your pickup spot in six minutes. Okay. Here it is. Yay. That's so weird. That's just a robot. Too bad it's not like a nice car. Oh, oh, oh. See, it's going far. Okay. Didn't get us to the address where we wanted to, but that's okay. Woo. We're on our way. For cruise support, press the square button on the ceiling above you. This is kind of surreal. Look, look at the steering wheel. Look, uh, look at the steering wheel. It's freaky. It's just kind of surreal. I've oh, there's... heard about the idea of self-driving cars for a year. Google's been developing it since I was in like middle school. But... There's a uh, like plexiglass between them in the front too in this one. It's weird. So that... their camera guy, look at that. You can see the arm of their camera guy. He's like crammed in the back with him <laughs> for this shot before he got to ride in the passenger seat. I actually see it now. It doesn't scare you that there's nobody there. No. He drives better than me. How about your dad? <laughs> better than dad? <laughs> uh, His I'll dad say more, drives terribly. I'll say less recklessly. It follows the handbook of driving to a T. But I just don't think a lot of young people want to support this technology. Hello. I was just talking about it. With oh, oh, you sound good. Both of them are like, yeah, just AI in general scares me. And I think it's huh. mostly the... Oh, yeah, watching a little uh, journalist tries a self-driving car and it goes wrong. Porn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chat room. Mr. Dominic's here. You know what that means. Get your butts in gear. Start bang suggesting. Get encoder.show slash matrix if you ain't yet. Matt is getting sued by 33 state AGs for addictive features targeting kids. How about that one? Boom, 33 states coming after Meta. <coughs> or Meta. Oh yeah. Poor poor Zuck. I wonder if he could I wonder if he could quit and like the next three generation of his kids would be set. You know, like I Just wonder, never do yeah. anything. I wonder how many yeah. generations of wealth he has, especially if they were smart with it. Uh all right. How are you feeling? You ready over there? Let's do it. Okay. Hello, Mr. Drew, coming in for uh, 541. Mr. Dominic, jump in at four, please. One, two, three, four. Four. I think that we should all no. make those Go businesses away. fail. Go away. Okay, here we go in three, two. This is Coda Radio, episode 541 for October 24th, 2023. Hey friend, welcome back to Jupiter Broadcasting's weekly talk show, taking a pragmatic look at the art and the business of software development in the whole world of technology. My name is Chris, and joining us from his improved sound cave, it's our host, Mr. Dominic. Hello, Mike. Hello. Man, you sound, I don't know, you sound like you're just riding my earlobes. It's super weird. Yeah. Maybe it's just, maybe you got like a little cold, so you just sound, you know. Yeah, I do have a little cold. Maybe that's that's what it is. Yeah. I think I got, a, I got a thing for the cold voice. I don't know what it is. It just always sounds so cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's, it's the only perk, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I didn't really know where to slot this into the show this week, because it's it's not well reported at this point, but it is confirmed by multiple sources that Sci-5, the leading Risk Five chip designer, which raised like 365 million in VC funding, 
has laid off somewhere between, this is where I say it gets vague, somewhere between 100 to 300 employees, mostly in its engineering team, and it's gutting its product portfolio. We do have a confirmation of sorts from Sci-5, essentially saying that they're realigning across all their teams and geographies to take better advantage of opportunities. Uh, they say they're adjusting to the rapidly changing semiconductor market and that they're still, uh, you know, excited about the future, but they had to eliminate positions. That's the only confirmation we've gotten from Sci-Fi. Is that is that where uh, the Chris Latner ended up going? The guy who created Swift at Apple, or am I? I know he was doing something Risk Five. Um, I'll look that up. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, I think you're right. Former Google and Tesla engineer Chris Ladner to yeah. lead. Yep, you are correct, sir. He's leading yep. their uh, Sci Five development platform. Oh but, oh, but he left. He left in 2022. Oh, oh geez. So. Okay, he was there for two years then. Uh, two years. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. I mean, you know, we could probably do one of these every other week, right? It's it's nothing. I don't know a whole lot about this company. I'm not really into the Risk Five stuff just because it's multiple layers down from the kind of thing I normally do, but. You know, when you raise money in the frothy printer go burr, you know, drunken bender, and then you have the hangover that is high interest rates. Uh, yeah, right. Like, it's there's a lot of these stories coming out, and there are these a thing to mention. Now, I did, I do know that these guys were hiring fairly aggressively about like a year or two years ago. Sure, and I'm sure the truth, and this is gonna, I think, tweak a lot of our listeners. But some of those packages and benefits were probably a bit frothy. And a recalibration is, is makes sense. I mean, it, 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 I, was, I forgot who the hell I was talking to. It was somebody over at Wave. And they were saying that one of the challenges is they get these new founders in. They're like an incubator over, over here in Tampa. And they're having to explain to them that like the crazy era of like stupid you know, Series A valuations is just over. And you need to re reevaluate your expectations on what investors are going to give you. Well, that cuts both ways, right? If you got those crazy valuations and you were spending like a drunken sailor, uh, now things are different and you're going to have to readjust it. It sucks. I mean, I feel bad for this one to 300 engineers, which is a weird way to say that, by the way, guys, one to 300. Well, that's just what the sources have said. Sci-fi yeah. wouldn't give us numbers. You know why it hits me in the feels? And what? I find it ironic because, you know, we weren't necessarily the only ones. But you and I were pretty out there early saying this VC funding is going to come to an end and it's going to disrupt a lot of businesses. Like we were calling that eight months, nine months, a year before. But it still hits me because what I'm realizing is it is going to take a toll on open source. And a lot of open source developers and enthusiasts they're really heads down on technology, and they don't really understand the financial side to all of this. And it's been their privilege, right, because the software is just free, and so they don't have to think about it a lot. But these companies were making this really cheap, subsidized stuff somehow. And Risk Five is, you know, we were told it would be a slow burn. Well, it's been a real slow burn, so they are probably burning through money. And Another area where we keep seeing this manifest, even with large established companies, because they, they even those large companies, their access to capital costs them more now. They're dropping support for things that have been quintessential in the open source ecosystem. Uh, I was just looking at the next version of RHEL that's currently in development, because you can follow it now with CentOS Stream very closely. And um, there's some technology in there that Red Hat is discontinuing development support for internally. Uh, I think the biggest one that stood out to me was the Evolution Data Backend Server, which not only is important if you want to use Evolution to like do email and calendar on the GNOME desktop, but that's also what the GNOME desktop uses to just do all the on online accounts feature, like integrate Google Calendar, all the quote-unquote online account settings. That's all powered by Evolution Data Server, and that's been maintained by Red Hat staff. And they're cutting back in a lot of areas. And some of it, the, the community doesn't even realize the impact this is going to have on momentum. And I think we're going to feel it with Risk Five, but I don't think it's going to be tangible immediately. It's going to be lost opportunity is how, it'll, is how it's going to manifest. 
And I, I really, really hope this platform succeeds because we need a valid open competitor to something like ARM. But it has to succeed on its own merits and strengths, not on VC money. It's a tough one. I hope they do all right, though. Let's get into some feedback we got. Uh, Pry11 wrote into the show, and get this. He, he caught this. I didn't even. I had to go look it up on the calendar. Hey, Mike and Chris, Apple has a Mac event scheduled between coders next week. Any guess on what we're going to see? Anything developers should be looking for as like maybe a tax write-off at the end of the year that they might be interested in? Uh, and Pry's right. Monday, October 30th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, odd time. Apple is holding a scary fast event the day before Halloween. Um, and the word on the street is probably Mac updates because the logo is the Mac lo- or the. Yeah. 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 I, so I, I'm seeing rumors that it's an M3. I think that's a little fast. Right. Isn't that. It'd be think, great. When did the, it, would, it would be great. I mean, certainly. You know, your mic, uh, your mic might be going out. I'm hearing some really weird. I'm going to stop recording just for a second. Sure. I wonder if you did a plug and unplug and then did a refraunch. Oh, you know what? How does it sound now? No, it's still it's still breaking up. It's, but it's not like a packet loss. It's like a USB thing. That's so weird. All right, let's see. I liked I liked in Windows when you'd plug a device in and then unplug it. Doo-doo. Doo-doo. I missed that. Yeah, I don't have that. I have uh Oh, did you fix it that fast? Well done. It sounds fine. Can you hear hello, me? Hello, hello. Oh, you might have to change. Not like that. You might have to change your settings. Yeah, yeah, because your your settings change, so you have to. But you're sounding better. So we just have to. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello. So look and see if there's anything. You might have to refraunch. Oh, oh! Why don't you work? Yeah, there you go. He's refraunching. The irony that this is during the Apple thing, right? Some irony in that. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so Squadcast cannot survive a plug-in without refreshing the page. You do sound better, though. <clears throat> so okay. Mission accomplished there. All right, let me uh, give Drew a nice clean edit here. All right, jumping at four again, so he's got to sync. Let's, yep. do, let's do that dance. One, two, three, four. Four. All right. You were saying uh, it's a little fast for M3s. It feels a little fast. It doesn't mean it's not possible, right? Um, you know, I don't... So I think the gaping hole in the lineup right now is the IMAX, right? That would be, I think, a pretty uh, good product for them to update, especially if they could get its price point like somewhere between the mini and the studio. Right, um, right. But certainly, if they want to make a big splash, and the only thing that makes me think maybe it is M3s, is their little tagline? You know, they always like to like tease you, like scary fast. That's certainly, yeah. I mean, I I don't know who who's jonesing for, especially if we're talking like the MacBook Airs or more likely the MacBook Pros here. Who's jonesing for an M3 already? If you just got an M2, I guess. I, right. I think you nailed it. It's it it's got to be the iMac. It's been 907 days since they updated the iMac. It's still got the original M1 in there. You know, they could do something like put a really fancy M2 chip in the iMac and essentially make it the iMac Pro without saying it's the iMac Pro. Make a Mac Studio with the screen. You know, yeah, so th- right. That might be a, that might be a product that they're going to launch and that then you could do it with the M2 and still claim it's scary fast because they've put like an M2 Ultra in there and you know, blah 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 blah. Well, and the iMac sell really well to the education market, so you're probably going to have a lower end version too. You know, the, basically the crap one that the school can buy in bulk. Um, I would hope so. I mean, unless they're really not going to continue that product. Oh no! I see. I, it's no. The, the yeah. iMac. No. 
Right. It's it's iconic, right? It's it's kind of there. It's also yeah. just great for a certain kind of business retail customer that's willing to spend a little more on a computer that looks good like in their lounge and in their office, right? It's great at it's 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 really just if you need a Mac for a job and you want a screen, hey, you know, that's the iMac. Um, I, I I expected when they switched to the M series platform, they would update more frequently. Uh, their average was three hundred and ninety eight days when it was Intel, and now yeah. we're like nine hundred and seven days. August of two thousand and twenty one is when I mean I thought the whole thing about them having their own platform is we wouldn't have the Intel leg, so it's way overdue. Um, and I think they, if they made a Mac Studio and an iMac, I think that could be a compelling product. Now, um, I think we might be SOL on coverage because I was going to talk to you about doing a double next Monday, the day before Halloween. Right. Because I'm traveling the week after. So it'd be like two weeks before. <laughs> before be two right? weeks. Yeah, yeah, I think we are SOL because I'm also traveling that week. So Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, okay, well, let's sort that out. But I think we'll probably end up, so if you're listening, if you're listening to this week and you want to join us live next week, we'll be yeah. doing a double. Like one more thing, I think they would make a bigger fuss if it was the M threes too, mm. right? They wouldn't. Would they really just be doing a no press live stream? A no press live stream on YouTube and Apple TV at I don't know. five p.m. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna go cringe and do a whole Halloween theme? I hope so. You know what? You hope cringe. So. <laughs> I like cringe. I miss the cringe, right? I like when Federici's out there and his glorious mane is glistening in the sun and photoshopped glory that is the Apple recorded events. I, I, I you know, I, I like the cringe. I miss the cringe, right? I, I miss the uh, the candy stripe crap from the old Macs. I, I kind of, I don't know, right? Like, you, you can't take this shit too seriously. It's serious. Come on, like, it's, it's just not. It's memorable for me, right? Like it's, you know, I remember more of the cringe than I do more of the announcements because you get to a point where these products are maybe the great products, but they're they're effectively iterative. So yeah, and the videos too. They while they're so well done, and they do a fairly decent job at information density. We still lost something with the live demonstration where it actually had to work live, and that to me really meant that the product had to be, you know, at least to that level where with the video productions, they could just CG the UI if they have to, you know, they can fake it with the fully produced versions. And you never really quite know if what you're looking at is real versus manufactured. Uh, And I feel like that's been lost in these productions at the same time. I feel like they waste less of my time. So I guess that's a, it's a benefit, but Mr. Dominic, if you like cringe, stay tuned. Oh, but first, head on over to Alderon.game slash coder. They're hiring remote positions, plenty of positions on the site, and they're also looking for other spots to fill in the future. So go brush up your resume. Alderon.game slash coder. A series of papers have come out from the Olympian, from Bloomberg, and, of course, John Gruber's chimed in with his uh, info from, quote, Little Birdies. The word is that Apple is set to invest more than a billion annually into AI. And Apple's senior vice president, which is in charge of AI and software engineering, named John General Miranda, it's a big one, and, of course, Craig Federici, they together are spearheading this effort on Tim Cook's team. They're referred to as the, quote, executive sponsors of generative AI. Ooh. Uh-huh. Eddie Q is in on the action too as head of services. He's as he always is. Yeah, of course. He's there for his thirty percent at all times. Uh, and uh, Apple software engineering teams are looking to integrate their baked a- their home brewed AI into the next version of iOS, as well as into future tools like Xcode. And then Eddie Q's organization is pushing to add AI into as many apps as possible, like Apple Music, of course. And then the July report that Bloomberg and others highlighted found that behind closed doors, Apple was frantic about coming up with a chat GPT competitor. In fact, German wrote, quote, I can tell you in no uncertain terms that Apple executives were caught off guard by the industry's sudden AI fever and have been scrambling since late last year to make up for lost time. Quote, there's a lot of anxiety about this, and it's considered a pretty big miss internally according to a person that has knowledge of the matter. They're caught off guard, Mike, and they panicked internally. They're scrambling now. They're going to throw a billion dollars. Do you know what's so funny about that, though? Like, kind of ironic? 
is, is Apple when they you know made slash acquired Siri was way ahead on like the, all their like marketing and what people were talking about the excitement of Siri was to do basically like voice chat GPT and they just never got their s together right it, it's I don't know about you but I drive my car I have CarPlay and I'm like hey Siri sorry guys play uh you know. I don't know, Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, playing some death metal. Like, what? What are you doing? Yeah, it's Why bad. are you like this? It's, yeah. It, yeah, it misses a lot. It, it, it's like, a, it's really, it's really terrible. I, I, I feel like they should have, like they should have owned this. I mean, they, and they already have your phone is always attached to your hip, right? It's, it's not like they don't have access to you at all times to the point of, them themselves adding a feature that tells you once a week how addicted to your phone you are, which, you know, just stop and think about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like how could they be surprised when they themselves thought this was a great idea? <laughs> like six years ago or something, right? I It yeah. does. That is the thing that gets me is they saw Siri and they saw the obvious kind of use cases and business uses and customer benefits and they saw the whole kind of trend way before Amazon and everybody else and then they just I don't know I guess they just haven't kept up with it um it's so it's weird when these rich giant powerful companies with all this market insight miss something like this uh, but it it's I think the also it's the innovators dilemma it's as you get so big it becomes harder and harder um, which they're also facing with another matter now, uh, I, I want to pause again. I'm so sorry, Mike. Um, I don't know. Something, I want to make – I'm just going to stop the recording again because I want to double check because that noise is back. And I want to just make sure it's not in the local recording because it's kind of unlistenable if it is. If it's just in the live one, we'll continue on. And I'm just going to dubs check. Dubs check. Sorry, Drew. Wait. I, I was muted. No, yeah. It's just when you talk. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just double checking just because if it's in the – it won't be listenable if it's in the other one. But if it's uh, – is this 541? Yes. Uh, yeah. I wonder what it is. I'm grab yeah, I got it. I'm grabbing them. Of course, it has I to mean, zip the files first. I don't want it to zip the files. Let me just make sure I don't have any stupid background processes yeah. running. Smirk, smirk. Oh, shit. You know what? I'll be right back. Okay. I think I know what it is. Raj. You have all the files off this session, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're okay. I'd play that, but I'd get in trouble by YouTube. But if we were just on the Jupiter Tube stream, I could play that. See, you know, this doesn't hurt Jeopardy. How about now? Oh, yeah, I think it's better? good. <clears throat> All right, so you know what it was? What? Usually, Squadcast doesn't let it itself open in Safari. I guess it does now. Oh, Safari, cheese, go for it. Yeah, so I didn't even realize it because I just clicked the link. Nice catch. All right, thank you. Although now it's complaining. Uh oh, what? Uh, I just, uh, okay, I had some ping, but okay. it looks like it went away. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So we'll do uh, the four count again. Let me get a little noise for Drew. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four. There's been a lot of talk about Apple canceling Jon Stewart's The Problem With or whatever his show was because of conflicts of interest. Quote, Mr. Stewart and Apple exe ex ex pfft. quote Mr. Stewart and Apple executives have had disagreements over some of the topics and guests on the problem. This is what people said. Stewart told members of his staff on Thursday that the potential show topics were related to China and artificial intelligence and were causing concerns among top Apple executives. Um, okay. Yeah, there also was a concern apparently from these executives, that as the presidential campaign heated up, there would be, quote, potential for further creative disagreements. <laughs> um, this is really kind of just so embarrassing for Apple. You know, I mean, they used to be like this principled, well, at least they pretended to be principled company, but I guess we're really seeing their true, their true colors. It's just these companies become large media corporations. I think it's kind well, of an embarrassing look, though. I think it's a bad look, right? I mean, sh should Apple even be in the business of producing a political show at all? No. I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, right? I mean, 
I, you got to give uh, like H, the HBOs of the world one thing. They know the business they're in, and I can't. HBO in particular isn't perfect, but they generally know when they hire somebody who has a political bent, they're going to be dealing with that, right? Think Bill Maher. That's why I'm thinking of HBO. But I, I mean, on the one hand, it's easy to say this is gross because it it, it is, right? On the other hand, if you are said Apple executives, this is kind of the, the Weapon X China problem too, right? You, Elon can't screw with China because he's got all his Tesla stuff there, among other things. Right, Apple can't screw with China; they're too big of a market. And then don't even you know start thinking about the manufacturing Foxconn side of things. Um, Apple, Apple, China just got upset with Foxconn, and all of a sudden Foxconn's getting an audit. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. they don't they don't play over there, right? Go go ahead and ask Jack Ma, right? He'll disappear for about a month. Uh, I I don't know what to say. It, it's I mean to be honest, it it seems like. If John Stewart wants to continue to do this show, and he's somehow not contractually locked up, which I doubt his lawyers would ever allow something like that, right? Go ahead and call Showtime. Seriously, right? HBO has Bill Maher. Oh, yeah. I would say John Stewart and Bill Maher are kind of in the same lane. Yep. They right? could, of yeah. like he's, he's got no problem getting another gig, right? Right, and just <laughs> go to go to somewhere where they know they're a media company, and they, yeah. you know, whatever, right? It's uh, yeah. Uh, so here's how these big companies think about it. It's not a um, I don't think it's a political thing. I don't think it's a moral thing. Th- listen to the language. The sources, because this is a Hollywood story, so the Hollywood reporter was digging in, and sources told them that, quote, Apple approached Stewart and informed the host that both sides needed to be aligned regarding topics on the show. You know, that's, we just need to make sure we have business alignment on the matter, because this is business, John. I don't know where he's going to go where he can actually speak his mind on things that, other than his own independent platform, though. Well, I mean, that's the problem, right? Like, you, you would think, okay, Disney. Well, Disney, like, remember, what was that uh, That superhero show? Um, oh, my Lord. It was the movie Something in the Five Rings. It's like a, he's like a Chinese dude. He's like a, he's like a B-level Marvel hero. Well, you know, there's a better example. You could look at... Uh, the Doctor Strange movie, right, where they made uh, they China threw a fuss because the uh, whatever it is, the Oracle lady dude is like from Taiwan. Yeah, that was an issue for the or was it Tibet? I can't remember. But it's all these companies are having to tiptoe around that that rock hard dragon. Uh, you know, it's. I mean, you look around. There, there was I, I I tweeted something snarky and then I took it down, but like. 60 Minutes was interviewing the Five Eyes uh, intelligence chiefs, right? So America and her allies. And they're like doing all this, hey, we're friends. We have a, you know, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, China's out there being like, oh, so if we don't, if you do something we don't like, we're just going to like destroy your business. (laughs) And you can't not be in China. So great. Well, did Apple just destroy their media business? I mean, don't you figure that... Apple doesn't care about... Well, yeah. if you're a creative and you you're looking for a streaming platform to join for your new idea, this this is a very very public breakup and John Stewart has a lot of respect in that industry. I don't know, didn't Apple just sort of disqualify them to some at least to some creatives? Maybe they're happy. Maybe Apple just doesn't want to maybe they should just stay out of politics, but they won't. But I feel like this is um this is a black mark now for uh, for the for the brands or celebrities that get to be picky, and those are the ones these streaming platforms want to draw, they're going to look at this and think, "I don't want to do business with these guys." Yeah, but Apple's not not like Netflix, right? This streaming stuff is just a sideshow to basically they just want that recurring revenue of the Apple subscription, which includes the fitness stuff, the music, uh, iCloud storage, and. Uh, and now if you do the Apple financing on your phone, I think you can do it through there too. Mm. So, and Apple care. So I don't know. I, I almost, I would almost go the other way and say they never should have been in this content business. Yes. Right. Be the toll booth, get your 30% or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's up to let Bob Iger figure out if he wants to fight with Xi Ping, right? Seriously. Like, but it's the same argument, Comcast, just Comcast shouldn't be a streaming platform. It should just be a dumb pipe that gets me access to Netflix and HBO and the others. Apple should be the technology platform that enables those applications. But of course, they all had to get into the content business. Well, there's a big difference though, right? Comcast isn't getting a VIG or a spiff off of everything you buy or stream on their platform, or Apple is. Mm. Right? I'm sure Comcast would be happy to 
knock their shit off if they got 30% every time you watched, I don't know, Golden Girls or something, right? Oh, man. They'd save some money. Uh, I just, I'll just i put a link. I don't know if this was the episode because I didn't really get to watch much of The Problem. But there was one episode where John kind of learns how money is created in the United States and his mind is blown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I watched them all. I actually, I actually kind of like the show. It, I will say though, it, it's like you gave uh, us, like podcasters, budget, and we just bought fancy stages and decided to go fly to talk to fancy people. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's definitely like a show that should have just been a podcast, which is kind of the other thing. He could totally do this on YouTube and be fine. He's like, yes, he has less budget, but I, I don't know. It's it worked out for Joe Rogan, right? So. Tailscale.com slash coder, 100 devices for as long as you want, y'all. It's a great deal, and you can support the show, Tailscale.com slash coder. The media has a scoop. Uh, I saw it on the uh, first Reuters, and then it quickly went to the financial news, and stock prices started going up and down for the companies involved. I mean, it's spreading like wildfire, and it is. NVIDIA has quietly, i.e. already begun, designing CPUs for Microsoft Windows systems that would use the ARM platform. The idea is, and potentially they'd also work with AMD, they could start shipping PCs based on the ARM platform as soon as 2025. Uh, The way that the financial press is interpreting this is this could be the end of the Wintel marriage, and it would mark, quote, the end of one of the tech industry's most important chapters and would be devastating to Intel. I, I don't I don't think so. Oh, here's the pitch. Here's the pitch. Pitch me, pitch me. This is your AI workstation on the go, loaded with AI's Word. amazing technology with their, you know, shared architecture, CPU, memory and compute chips. This thing is custom built for efficiency and dedicated AI workloads because that's that's what Nvidia is now an AI company. And that's how they position themselves. That's how their CEO talks about them. That's how the market talks about them. And when you partner with AI, you're doing it because it's an AI. When you partner with NVIDIA, you're partnering with an AI company now. Are you? Well, they sure want you to think you are. (laughs) I mean, or is this going to be like you're... Jimbo buying a Windows laptop and maybe you get the NVIDIA processor because it's on sale. Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, I mean, the market seems to like it. NVIDIA shares are up 4% on the news. Uh, Intel shares were down 3% on the news. ARM shares went up 4.89% on the news. Um, So the market seems to think it's legit. I don't really know. Um, Again, it really would live and die on the software and the workload and the use case. Because I think Windows' bread and butter is enterprise compatibility and that entire legacy of management and the way everything works, which sometimes is specific to a processor architecture. Like, I just feel like that's the bread and butter of Windows. And this is a radical new start. There's not nearly the software options, especially in the enterprise space, on ARM for Windows, for the desktop. Right. They're going to need their own version of Rosetta. And this actually reminds me, remember the Google uh, antitrust trial? Yeah. Where the they got a bunch of records from Dell who was trying to get Google to pay them to put Chrome as the default. Uh, and Google was like, oh, you could just go ahead and like delete IE6 or whatever it was, right? Whatever version of IE. And they had to have the meeting like, actually, we can't because a bunch of our enterprise customers have custom software that only runs in IE. And if we do that, our computers just won't work for them. Um, I'm willing to bet that that is not going to work on these ARM-based uh, NVIDIA machines, and that's a real problem. I don't, I don't know how. I mean, I would love to see you know the MacBook Air equivalent for Windows that gets the 20 hours of battery life, whatever. But the idea that this is going to take the market by storm and kill uh, Intel, I don't buy it. Right? I, I, I just don't. I. Yeah. So, and also, how committed is NVIDIA going to be to this ARM line? I mean, this... here's here's another wrinkle, though. Yesterday, mm. before we... So, th- this is the NVIDIA announcement today. Yesterday, there was an announcement that Microsoft also formed some sort of, quote, exclusive partnership with Qualcomm, with 
form some sort of, quote, exclusive partnership with Qualcomm for hardware for the Windows ARM 11 versions of laptops. And so what the picture that's now being painted is that NVIDIA will do the CPU, the GPU, and some of the AI compute, and then Qualcomm's going to replace some of the chips that were provided by Intel previously, like some of the bridge chips and the comm chips and stuff like that that were Intel are now going to be Qualcomm chips, all designed for ARM. Um, that's So it's these two announcements together, I think that has everybody kind of like, oh my God, something's happening here. I, again, again, this seems like something we've seen before from these same mm. companies. NVIDIA is kind of a newer wrinkle to it. You know, it's not unusual though to see Qualcomm or or Samsung in a you know in an announcement like this. We've seen these before, but I'm I kind of want them to do it. <laughs> How about that? You know, I, I mean, something is better than nothing. Yeah, I want to see what they could make. Maybe they could make a viable alter. Oops, sorry. Maybe they could make a viable alternative to the M platform. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or <laughs> or this gets canceled in less than a year. You know, there's that too. Okay, well then, how about a little pick me up? I think we got to appreciate an engineering marvel that was accomplished and uh, is actually set to be accomplished at the end of the week, phase two. NASA engineers just sent a software update to a spacecraft that's 12 billion miles away. That's Voyager two. It's on its almost 50 year journey. It took 18 hours to transmit the update, and they're trying to solve for a, prob a problem that the Voyager 1 probe experienced last year. Back in 2022, NASA reported that it was having weird readings from Voyager 1's sensors, which manage altitude and attitude and articular control, and the data was just bonkers. It didn't make any sense. They thought maybe they'd lost the probe. But they, they sorted it out there, and now they think they have a software patch that they're going to do on Voyager 2, they sent that out, and if all looks good, on October 28th, it's going to install. They're going to use Voyager 2 as the test bed since it's a little bit closer. And once everything's been in production for a while, they'll send it to Voyager 1, which is 15 billion miles away. So Voyager 2 is 12, and Voyager 1 is 15 billion miles away from the Earth. Um, and the just absolutely remarkable thing about this team behind these updates is these are some of the same engineers that have been there since the 70s when this thing launched. Some of the same flight crew um, since like, you know, 77. Now, some of them have passed on, but many of them have passed up much more lucrative opportunities um, just to stay with this thing and to be topic experts on it for these types of situations. Imagine working a project for f almost 50 years. I mean, just think about that from like a funding and sustainability standpoint of the organization behind it, the, the, the long-term thinking that keeps these engineers, this handful of engineers on the payroll for this long so they can continue to develop and patch the system and keep it running. Uh, I don't really, I can't think of anything like this in the world. Or in the galaxy, I guess. You just wait until the Romulans see this. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna probably draw in some uh, unwanted Romulan or Klingon attention. <laughs> you know what? Oh, the Klingons. Yeah, I know this is really cool, right? It's just everybody who's been complaining about like their continuous integration or their GitHub actions or their Chef scripts not working. Try it in space. Give it a go. Yeah, I, I think it's really cool. And, and the worst thing is like the margin for error here is so, so unforgiving, right? Because it's not like you could do a quick, ooh, whoopsie, let me get reset hard. Yeah, and imagine if it's your patch that kills one of the Voyager probes that have been going for this long, they're that far out. I don't even know what to say. That would be so stressful. How could you sleep I, for the, even the 18 hours it takes to even transmit, then let alone how long it takes to, like, build and test on the device? Like, I'd, You've got to imagine, like, the QC process is intense here, right? It's, it's like, Oh, man, and the hardware to do that QC process must be as old as the hardware in space in order for it to be accurate. How do you even maintain that? I would think so. Yeah, how do you even... <laughs> it's remarkable. I'll, I'll have some links in the notes. 
that get into um, the team behind it. It's a little old, but I think it's I think it's still accurate. So October twenty eighth is when uh, the update that's sitting now on the Voyager two probe will trigger. So possibly by the time you're listening to this episode, or just shortly around then, this will be going down and we'll have news. We shall see. Hopefully our hopefully it all has been tested and it goes well. I want to thank our members out there who support this show directly, coderqa.co to sign up. You get an ad-free version of the show and the Coderly Report, a little special thank you extra show we do just for our members. <clears throat> and you can sign up at coderqa.co or support all the great shows at jupiter.party. And that is a fantastic way to give us a little ongoing revenue that we can project during the ad winter. And you can also support each production individually with a boost. You can try out a new podcast app at podcastapps.com. They got a bunch of good ones over there. Fountain is so close to 1.0. Pod versus Developer just went full-time on their GPL cross-platform podcast app. And they're the one I'm super excited about right now as pod fans just because they have some really cool features in there that they're working on that I haven't seen before. But you can also keep your existing app. You might not get the transcripts and the cloud chapters and the boosts and the live item tag and alternative enclosures, all that kind of stuff. But you can still listen. And you can boost using your web browser. Just get Albi. GetAlby.com. You top it off using something on the Lightning Network like the Cash App or RoboSats or Strike. Or you can actually do it inside Albi directly too. Then go to a website that supports boosting like the Podcast Index or the Podverse Player or uh, Fountain FM. We'll put a link to the Podcast Index in the show notes. And then you can just boost from there using their website, our entry there, and get your message into the show while you support us. Four score and seven boosts to go. And Altera from the Blue comes in with 12,345 sats. Coming in hot with the blues. Uh, and he writes, I got a new SSD coming in next week for my main laptop, which means I have to nuke and pave. Since I'm building from the ground up, what would be the sell for Nix OS? I've been a Fedora user since Core 2 and RHEL before that, so that's my go-to. But I'm not opposed to being convinced to switching. I'm primarily working with .NET, a little Rust, some K8, some Pod, man. And most of my dev is in containers. I want to get on the bandwagon, but I'm not seeing the advantages for dev versus a typical Linux install. Oh, putting me on the spot with a complex question. So I think it really kind of comes down to what you value from a system. What I think the pitch for developers is with NixOS is like three main things. And the first I would start with is you solve a problem once and you solve it forever. Like if you want to get tail scale working, you figure that out once and it'll always, for every Nix install, always work. You'll always have that syntax. Uh, my buddy Brent, he's got a really nice brand new 13-inch framework laptop. But when you're in low power mode, there's a little buzz on the line for the headphone jack. Well, one single NixOS framework user figured out a little syntax for the Nix config to solve that, put it on his GitHub, and now it's fixed for every framework user running NixOS because they can just pull that in. So you solve a problem once, it's reproducible, it's shareable, and it's very easy to do version control for your system when you integrate that in with GitHub. Alternatively, you also have the rollbacks and all that kind of stuff. You can build ephemeral environments. So say you want to create a complete complex Python or Rust environment, you can go into this Nick shell ephemeral environment, install all the packages, get everything you need, and then when you close it, it's gone. It's pretty nice. Of course, you can also deterministically spin up containers that are just sort of like preset and ready to go. Uh, you can also, when you're building your Nick system, one of the output options can be a VM file. So you could do things on your local box, but then don't actually apply it to the install, but create a VM that is of those changes. And you could test it that way. I think that's really neat. And then the thing that I think is really going to sing for developers over time is, is this aspect called flakes. It's a big part of kind of getting deep into the Nix community. And I think the main core advantage I take away from flakes is you can really easily pull in from a repo on GitHub or somewhere remote, a very specific version. You can pin to that. And you can kind of overlay it onto your system in a way that is very, very deterministic and manageable through just a couple of config piles. And you can pick those up and you can move them. You can restore, you can back them up. And all of that is very easy to read. So like you see it and you'll just understand what it works. And one of the advantages to that is, is when I pull up somebody else's Nix config or a flake file or whatever it might be, I can just read that file 
and I know everything about their system. I understand how their system works, the type of software they're using, the configuration, the boot configuration, the disk layout, kernel stuff, development environment, container environment. I can get it all from that config, and I find that to be really, really nice, especially as you go on and you've been using it for a long time. It just gets more and more beneficial. Um, so that would be kind of a, a quick pitch, although I, if you've got Fedora and it's working for you, stick with it. You could always just put the Nix package manager on it and start there and see if it works for you. Sorry for the extremely, extremely long answer. I tried to make it as short as possible. Um, but I love it. Two-way six. Ah, uh -huh. comes in with another space ball boost. One, two, three, four, five. So the combination is one, two, three, four, five. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life. He's feeling the pain from Germany. He says not a single episode goes by without mentioning the robe. Sad cries from Germany. Oh, two-way six, the irony is you just made the robe mention in the show. But, Mike, what if I told you we had a secret small stash of robes? <gasps> Robeception. We should talk a little bit about that. Maybe we do something for the holidays. People are yes. feeling the winter breeze, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Must liberate them from their pain. Altair the Blue comes in with 3,500 sats, sending us his sats as he's switching over to Podverse. He didn't want them to sit idle. Well, that's awful nice of you. You can't move them on the Lightning Network, but I'll take them. And enjoy Podverse. Let me know what you think. CG Barrows comes in with 2,200 sats, but no message. Just wanted to support the show. And then How Was Right comes in with 6,301 sats. I understand, he writes, Mike's cynical view on Robin Hood, but... Anyone who sells a product is going to buy at a lower price and offer it to you at the higher price. That's how markets typically work, excluding distortions in the market from states or crime. The Robinhood trader presumably is happy with the higher price because that's likely the best deal they can get for exposure to stocks. Hmm. So do you, do you think that's a fair view of how Robinhood works? Or do you still feel like uh, it's shady? I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily shady. I would say that there are now other platforms that don't do that. Uh, that are accessible, right? In terms of, I I'm not saying that should they be allowed to do their little arbitrage game for Citadel? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, but it'd be nice if there was a way to be transparent about it, so you knew you were paying a higher price, right? Uh, because I think it's kind of I think what the core of what's kind of feeling gross about it is the reality is they're probably as successful as they are because they're capitalizing on the ignorance of the consumer. Right. But it is kind of how a lot of, a lot of that kind of stuff works. Uh, he says, uh, he also continues, I listen to your Tailscale ads all the time, which really made me want to use Tailscale, but I, shield, I shied away because I didn't want to use another server controlling my ACLs to my systems, even if it's just the metadata. But then I learned they have a project called Headscale, which allows me to host the coordination server myself so I'm finally giving Tailscale a try. Should mention Headscale if you haven't already. Headscale is fantastic you know. for folks just like you. How uh, I want something that is a little more turnkey, so that way it is like appliance level solid. But I think it's great that Headscale's out there. I, I give them, I give them a lot of praise for that. Bunch of nuts comes in with Spaceball Boost. So the combination is one, two, three, four, five. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I got to watch that movie again. I got a newer version of that boost, too. Uh, he says, I'm having my someone is wrong on the internet moment. Uh-oh, bunch of notes. Here it comes. He says, the use of the word carbon is frustrating. Organic chemistry is carbon chemistry. Carbon dioxide, monoxide, methane, gasoline, wax, etc. They're all carbon. I love the show. Keep up the great work. I've been a fan since last with Chris and Brian. Well, thank you, Nuts. I really appreciate that. That's how, that's what my trolling was about. Um, and then I, I did, I think I probably mentioned on the show, but I, then I had to think about it, and I was like, oh, we do this all the time. Yeah. Like I, like I mentioned before, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi encompasses a lot of different complex technologies with a wide range of different capabilities. And then, to make it more egregious, how many times do you hear the normals refer to their LTE service as Wi-Fi? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've just had to let it go. Even though it's not accurate, I had to let it go. And that's without getting into the different Wi-Fi standards, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I um, I have decided to not harp on the uh, carbon thing anymore, even though I'm not a fan of it, and I wish we could be more technically accurate. And I also wish big companies would focus more on developing renewables and methane reduction 
instead of going on about this, you know, big bag carbon, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it, I suppose. Now, we had six boosters this week, and we stacked 49,036 sets. Now, that will be up a little bit uh, because uh, the Dave Jones Auto Boost will come in next week uh, and bop, that's up, bop us up to 59,000. But uh, if you've been thinking about boosting, now is your chance to step up. You could make a big impact as uh, I guess the false egg sets in. Perhaps because the price went up, everybody's like, oh, I don't want to boost now. But if you think about it, it just means your stats get more work here. Uh, the number doesn't really matter so much as the value and the support that you feel this show is worth. It is a value for value production, and we appreciate all you boosters and you members out there for making this little show. Even if it was a humble amount, we're still really grateful. Of course, there's always lots of other ways to help the show, too. You can share it with a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to really get podcast advertising out there because you can't really convince people to listen to like an hour of something unless somebody they trust tells them it's okay. That's another great way to support the show. You can also always join us live and help that live vibe. We'll be live next Monday, it sounds like. Always put it on the calendar at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. And you can always stop by and uh, give us that in-person, well, I guess virtually speaking, encouragement. Appreciate that, too. And, of course, we always appreciate you just listening. Mr. Dominic, is there any place you'd like to send these good people before we get? Uh, well, uh, go to at uh, Dominic one Weapon X. And if you are a Republican congressman, and apparently this Emmer dude's bid is going to fail as well, I'm available to be speaker. Yeah, that's, you know what? That's a good idea. I get behind that. It'd be kind of hard for the show. But maybe just do it live from the floor or something. You know, my first uh, proposed legislation would be? What? To build a bronze charger or a statue right outside the Capitol. If that's what it takes. All right. That's okay. what it takes. I'll go for it if that's what it takes. Links to what we talked about today are coder.show slash 541. Do check those out. Our contact page is over there. Your emails are a big part of the show as well. We appreciate that value. And, of course, you can get all the back shows at coder.show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here next week. Thank you, Mr. Drew. Appreciate you. Mm-hmm. I'll how, stop how, can, how are they unable to like do this? I don't understand. Unable to do what? What are we? Which one? The, the whole speaker thing. They oh, can't. that. Yeah. Oh, God. I know. What a drama fest. And, you know, for a hot minute there, right before uh, Jordan dropped out, I don't know if you saw this, but your boy Gates went out there and said, we'll the nine of us or whatever the eight of us that started the seven that started this whole damn thing we'll all put ourselves up for censure or removal if you bring in jordan uh then they did their little quiet private vote and nobody wanted to support jordan so they all gave up but for a hot second there gates was like yeah we'll put our heads on the axe if uh if you get jordan in here that was a pr- i could that was a, like seemed like a hail mary move well I, I my favorite part is this is all happening because he wanted McCarthy to stop an investigation into him, and McCarthy wouldn't do it. Like it's 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 so weirdly personal between the two of them. You get if you haven't read it, folks, you gotta oh, yeah. read this. Oh, it's yeah. like it had nothing to do with philosophy or politics. It's hey man, I really don't want people asking what I do with those interns, you know, or what other partying I'm doing on the side. Can you just shut that down? The guys, like no, bro. What are you talking about? No, you don't do illegal shit. Like oh, I guess you're out of a job then. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> like, okay. The whole thing, the whole way he had to get in there with like whatever many votes it was. And then, you know, Gates pulling the strings on the whole thing was just wild from the very beginning. A little, little bow tie dude is just sitting there like, am I just going to like be here for a while now? Is that, is that what's happening? <laughs> Nvidia inside. I went with better late than never in a reference to Apple getting freaked out about AI. Uh, we've I also like got. The great open risk five gets risky, although that could be confusing because uh, the risk game, I would think. Like, yeah, yeah, and I think I like the great open source depression, but it's just sort of sad. Mm. So catchy title. <laughs> all right, all right. So Monday, does that work for you? Next week, regular time, we just do two of them. Do just do two. All right. Yep, sounds good. All right, Mister Dominic. Have Talk a good to you rest later. of your week. Later, chat room. Bye. Bye. Chatroom, thank you very much for hanging out with us. So you just heard the deets right there. Uh, we're going to be doing a double next week. Then I'm going to be in El Salvador. So I won't really be, uh, you know, doing any shows on the stream. I think, oh, actually, I lie. I think I'm going to try to do LUP from El Salvador. So that could be a thing. 
But do join us next week for the Coder one. I think that's going to be great. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate you. And I hope to see you next week. Because you really make it worth doing live. If you weren't here, we'd... Well, why would we be doing it live? So, so you know, you got to come or else we're going to stop doing it. But then maybe you don't care because you weren't coming in the first place. I'm getting in the circle here. I just want to end on a thank you for being here. And I hope to see you on Sunday for Linux Unplugged. <laughs>